Well, we welcome everyone, and uh, we want you to know that you are so welcome. Where is Faye Wren? Where is Faye Wren? Over here. Yes, God bless her heart. And uh, so, God bless her heart. And she wants to know more about the church, and she uh, certainly wants to come and be with us. And uh, Sister Brown is her aunt. Um, and uh, you have a, did you bring a visitor from Sarasota? All right, this is your aunt. All right, Lou Brown. All right, welcome to here tonight. And we're glad to see everybody of uh, the regulars, the saints of God, called to be saints of God, of the church in Bradenton that is here holding up, as we say many times, uh, allegorically, uh, the bloodstained banner of Christ. And uh, it is a bloodstained banner because banner is that which is unfurled over us and it is our emblem of victory, it's our flag of victory, and it's the blood of Christ that was spilled on the lonely ground of the isolated hill of Golgotha, uh, literally so that the last of the mortal flesh of his body spilled out, earth meeting earth, and from that moment that the blood that was given him uh, in the uh, womb of Mary, left his body, and he was no more man. He was no more the son of man. He ceased to be the son of man the moment the blood spilled out of his side and from his hands, and life was no longer there in his flesh. He offered up his flesh with much supplication and prayer, and uh, when his uh, the blood poured out upon the ground of Golgotha that ended the brief sojourning of the great uh, uh, work of faith of God and his son on this earth, treating the corruptible for the incorruptible, uh, redeeming the corruptible with the incorruptible. Uh, all the majesty and all the words of man all the books written can never, never, never describe what happened there at Calvary, the cross. Uh, it's sad that the church, and I don't say this incriminating anyone, I'm a student of the Bible, so I make statements based on my knowledge of the scriptures and my study of mankind. I, am, I, I don't just foolishly make a statement, but it's sad to me that the church uh, does not realize the penalty uh, that was inflicted upon Christ and uh, the uh, work that was done through his obedience. And though he were a son, yet he learned obedience by the things that he suffered. And he would never have to have learned obedience if he had not been man. Man's the only one that has to learn obedience. God doesn't learn obedience. Angels are never disobedient. There was never an angel in heaven that disobeyed God. Not one. Contrary to the church uh, world teaching of Lu uh, Lucifer, uh, the angel, supposedly the son of the morning. That's a fable. That's just a fable, as much a fable as the Greek fables are. Uh, that's a fable. There was never an angel in heaven that was disobedient. It takes a human being to, de de to be disobedient. A human being, you, I, we're rebels. We're rebels. We're rebels without a cause. Um, we, we spend our life, even after we get in the church, <coughs> rebelling. Uh, we, uh, we were Christians, but we rebel. Uh, we go about our seven-day week rebelling uh, and because um, uh, there's something in us that we don't want to give all of our body, our life, our mind. Uh, we say we're out of the world. We're not out of the world. Many, many people say, I'm out of the world. I'm a Christian. I'm out of the world. There's as much involved in the world as they ever were before they cut their say, before they ever came to Christ. Uh, they're, they're just as much in, involved. They indulge just as much. They go just as much. They mingle just as much. 
uh, they don't sacrifice. It, uh, it, 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 uh, the choice between pleasure and serving God, they take pleasure. Uh, that, that, they're, rebe they're rebels. Uh, I'm a rebel. Uh, you're a rebel. And uh, we, we rebel against God. That's the only thing that can uh, really rebel against God is a human being. Nothing else can. And Jesus, though he was a son, yet he learned obedience by the things that he suffered. And he would have never had to suffer if he had not been a human being. He would have never had to suffer if he had not been a man. But he did that for you and for me, hoping that one day we would become obedient and we would give our life to Christ and we would pay the price and we would be crucified with Christ. And that was his hope. Uh, the scripture said in, um, in Philippians 1 and 4, the scripture said, but in hope of eternal life. Hope, hope. Hope is the anticipation of. Uh, hope is the anticipation of. Uh, in hope of eternal life. That means we, uh, though we say we have eternal life, what you have is hope of eternal life. You say, I have eternal life. You have hope of eternal life. Yes, amen. See, because we know the teaching on the flesh and the spirit and sanctification and presenting of the spirit, soul, and body and overcoming the old man with his affection and desires, we know. We know that we don't have eternal, <coughs> excuse me, we don't have eternal life nailed down. It's in Christ and Christ has it. Uh, he is eternal, God is eternal, but we have hope. Hope is anticipation of if I can overcome flesh, I have eternal life. If I can overcome sin, I have eternal life. If I can overcome my desire to live in the world, like I said, people say, oh, I've come to God. I'm a Christian. I'm giving my life to God. Is that so? Uh, you really are. Uh, you, how much of you do you give to God? <coughs> how much of your life do you really give to God? How much of my life do I really give to God? Uh, how many hours? Measure the hours, count the days, measure the time, measure the attitude, measure the spirit, measure how you feel, how you think, where you go, what you do, and determine uh, if you really have given yourself to Christ. If you really are out of the world and living out of the world, and uh, though you're in the world, you're not of the world. See? Uh, measure it, count it. It might, it might shake you up if you did. And you realize that I really don't give a lot to Christ. I really don't give a lot of my finance to Christ. Uh, uh, most of my finance goes to, to support me, us, what we want. Keep us going, what we want to do, where we want to go. And not, not, it doesn't go there uh, in, in the offering. Um, it, it is not there. It isn't in there. Most of it's not there. Uh, the biggest part of it's not there. My finance, it's not there. I've got more in the bank than I've gotten there. I've got more uh, saved and set aside. I've got more that is in real estate or in, in land, houses, uh, than is in there. Cars, automobiles. Uh, so how much do I really give to God? How much do I really, uh, I'm a giver to God. How much do you give? How much do I give to God? Uh, do a little soul searching because if you, if you search your soul, you'll draw nigh unto God. If you don't search your soul, you'll never know really what you are and who you are as a child of God. Uh, you'll not understand yourself. Uh, you'll not identify yourself as a child of God, as, as a Christian um, in this world. Uh, you won't know who you are. Uh, because it's, it's easy to assume the title, I'm a Christian, I'm saved, I'm born again. Uh, are we really born again? Uh, how does a birth affect us? How, uh, a birth is a brand new citizen, isn't it? Uh, a child that's born is a brand new uh, citizen. Uh, when a child comes forth, it's a brand new person. Uh, so if I'm born again, I am a brand new person. I am changed. Uh, completely. Uh, everything about me 
uh, inverts itself in the Christ. So uh, I want to just talk along, along this line to feel some help from God on it. Um, yes. See, because the precious blood of Christ, and I'm living a victorious life. Yes. I'm walking a victorious life. It really means something to say that. Yes. It really means something to say that. Yes. If, if I'm living a victorious life, most of my time will be at the church. Most of my time will be with God's family. Uh, if, if I'm living a victorious life, most of my time, 90 some percent of my time, will be spent with the church and with Christians. Uh, uh, 90 <clears throat> some percent of my life will be with Christians. Uh, my family will be with me. They'll be there. Uh, and and uh, I'll, I'll spend 90 with some percent, then finally, I'll get to be 100%. Finally, there just won't be anything else. There won't be any other activity. Then, then I'll become a fanatic. People will look at me then and say you're fanatical or, or you're out of your mind, out of your reasoning. You have to be something besides that. Uh, but uh, when you, when you uh, really uh, just uh, delve into uh, living a victorious life, walking a victorious life, uh, being, uh, then, then I'll, I'll spend most of my time I'll give most of what I have, uh, my spirit, my body, my soul, my money, my time, my labor, everything I have. It'll just be given uh, to that which represents Christ because Christ is my life. Christ is my life. And, and I, I'm living a victorious life. I'm walking a victorious life. And I've had people say, that'll never be on this earth. I've had people make that statement, that'll never be. Well, that's because they don't read the scriptures and they don't understand the scriptures that there is going to be a sanctified and the word sanctified means set apart. There is going to be a glorious church and that glorious church is not going to have any spot in it, that is of the world, any wrinkle in it, any blemish in it, but it's going to be uh, of Christ. It's going to be in Christ. and. And, and it will be uh, a separated people. Now let's go to the song, book of the Songs of Solomon. Uh, here in, uh, um, and if you'll study with me in your scriptures tonight. And I'm so happy to see all of you. I hope I can leave you with something inspiring you. And uh, hope that you'll take my words as being encouraging and, and uh, urging you on. Uh, that's what I want to do. I want to urge you on. I don't want to provoke anybody to anything bad or good, evil. I don't want to provoke anybody to any wrath. or I don't want to provoke anybody to uh, being, uh, you know, in any way uh, negative or discouraged. I, I hope I can provoke you to love and to good works as a man of God, uh, as, as a preacher, um, as, a, as a pastor. And... Um, I, I, I really I want I, I really am encouraged about the church. Yes. I'm very encouraged about the church. Yes. I'm encouraged from the scripture standpoint. Yes. I'm not I'm not looking at the church from what I see with my eyes because that would not necessarily boost me as much as looking at the church from the scriptures. See, there's two ways you can look at the church from man's vision. <laughs> which is your vision and mine, or you can look at it from God's vision, which is the Word of God. And if you look at it through the looking glass of the Word of God, the church takes on a much more encouraging picture. If you look at it from just what you see with your eyes, the church will not be so high, so exalted, so lifted up, or so encouraging. Uh, but if you look at the church through the prism glass, of the seven colors rainbow, of the seven spirits of God, of the word of God, then the church takes on another appearance uh, because um, uh, you see it as, as God sees it. Uh, the, the scripture said, God seeth not as man seeth, for man looketh upon the outward appearance, but God looketh upon the heart. So if I look at the way God looks at the church, I'm encouraged. If I look at it the way man looks at it, I might not be so boosted or so charged up uh, because I'll be looking at negative more than I'll be looking at positive. 
I'll not see the positive that's in God. I'll not see the positive that's in the church. I won't see the praying widow. I won't see the widow giving the might, giving her all. I, I, won't, I won't see the uh, little sister, the little brother, the man of God, the elder, or, or whoever's laboring with a gracious, wonderful, godly spirit and godly attitude and godly zeal. I'll see the one uh, through the eyes of man. It isn't. And they bring in the negative. Uh, I won't see uh, the person that's giving their all, sacrificing their all. Uh, I mean, they're sweeping, baking, cooking. Uh, they're uh, in, in, in every activity they can get in to boost the church, to bless the church, uh, feeding the homeless. They're, uh, they're, they're in every activity. They're taking food to those that are just out of the hospital. They're going to see uh, the ones that are uh, crippled. Uh, they, they, they're busy. They're busy in the house of God. Uh, they're writing cards, sending cards on the telephone. They're calling. Uh, see? I, I'll see, I won't see them. I'll see somebody that's angry, upset, mad, growling, grouchy. Uh, I'll see somebody that's got a grudge. I'll see somebody that's, uh, you know, don't, you don't want anything to be pleasant, nothing to be good. Uh, everything's bad. I'll, I'll just look at them. I'll never see the, the, that which God sees. I, I, because I'm looking at it through the eyes of men. And, and, and that's why Christ could look from the cross downward uh, with a spirit different than any man could ever look up at the cross and see Jesus. I'll, I'll give you an example. They looked up at the cross and saw him and they said, ah, you be the son of God, come down. And we'll believe you then. That's the way they looked at him from the ground up to the cross. Uh, you know, yes. oh physician, heal thyself. Heal thyself. Heal others. Heal yourself. See, that's the way man. That's the way man looks. He looks at uh, a man is is cross-eyed concerning God. Yes. He doesn't he doesn't see as God sees. Uh, uh, he sees everything in a negative fashion. Now Christ, looking from the cross down, could look at man and say, Father, forgive them. Yeah. They don't know what they're doing. Why, why, you say they didn't know what they were doing? They were pounding those nails in his hand. They were ripping his side apart with a spear. You mean man didn't know what he was doing? No, Jesus said, forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. And the thief on one side railed at him and said, why, why save, uh, save us if you can do anything. Now's the time to save us. And, and I'll, I'll believe then, but here was a, Jesus didn't look at him. He looked over on the other side and he saw the other thief, and the other thief cried out and said, Remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus looked at him with the eyes that did not see as man sees, and he didn't see the sin. He didn't see the sin of that man. He said, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. <laughs> Praise the name of Oh Lord, why right then and there Jesus looked at, why, why could Jesus look from the cross down differently than man looked from the ground up? Because uh, God seeth not as man seeth. So I'm training myself, I'm adapting myself, because I expect to be in a few days from now, I expect to be in, in Jerusalem, somewhere over in Jerusalem, um, and, and I'm going to be uh, uh, ruling and reigning over uh, uh, one of those nations over there in the Middle East. Uh, see, uh, my, my vision is, so I want to train myself to be a better king than the king of Saudi Arabia. I, I want to be a, a better king, uh, a priest before those people, because I'm going to be reigning with Christ. I don't know what in the world are you talking about? See, you don't, do you know the Bible? You don't know the Bible? Yeah, you don't understand the scriptures? You think you're always going to be here eating beans and bacon? in Florida? You think you're always going to be here driving up to your driveway at your house and, and get out of your car and go in the house and put something on? No, you don't, you, you don't really, if, if you think that, you don't know the scriptures. Just a few days from now, and there's going to be just a moment, just a moment as it were, there's going to be a royal king reigning in Jerusalem. Praise the name of the Lord. There's going to be a great white throne judgment of 1,000 years. There, there's going to be 
144,000, according to the Revelation, the 14th chapter, 144,000 pure, not defiled with adulterous religion, churches, women, uh, having the seal of the Father, the knowledge of overcoming in their forehead, uh, playing upon their hearts, the Holy Ghost in them, their heart, singing hallelujah to the Lamb, Amen. hallelujah to the Lamb, yes. praise the name of the Lord, and they're going to be living and reigning, oh, not me, I'm going to be back here trying to cut my grass, keep my grass mowed in my yard, you'll be left behind, friend, uh, if you're going to, if that's all you see, is pushing a lawnmower for the next few years, and, and you're, you're interested in, in keeping your house and your garden and, and, and all you've got, and the church is last, it's, it's near last, if it's not last, it's last, uh, uh, you know, your, your batting average, as far as the church is concerned, is maybe if you were a hitter, uh, you might be hitting a 102 or, or 150 or something like that. Uh, but you're not a 300 hitter, and you're not a 400 hitter, as far as your percentage of, of, of see, because if that's what you see, see, I'm talking about vision. Are we are we the ordinary church? No, no. Are we a different church? Yes. Do we? I don't hear much. Praise the name yes. of the Lord. I, I, I don't hear much. I don't hear much around me. Uh, are, are we are we a different church? Yes. Are, are, are we the same churches down the street? No. If we are, let's close this place up and go down there. They they've got a few members. We got a few members. Let's put them together and have more members. Yeah. You know, if we're the same church as down at the end of the street, and they're the same church as we are, they're not filling their sanctuary, and we're not filling ours. So why don't we just get together and all be together and be, be you know be one 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 body of people? If we're the same church, if we have the same vision, if we don't see deeper in the scriptures, if God hasn't given us revelation, I, I, then why are we here? What, what are we doing here? If, if, if our vision is that we're going to go on having church like we are right now, and there's no mindset change, and there's no mood change and there's no attitude change, and nothing is changed. Oh my, my I'm, 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 I'm really seeing a lot. Uh, and, and, but it's the same thing, uh, then, then what are we doing here, folks of God, children of God? I, I personally think we want to amalgamate, confederate, and, and get together uh, uh, with the rest of the crowd in, in, that have the vision of just, uh, you know, living on this earth and dying. And, and then saying, Lord, uh, then you do with it what you will. But see, I believe that God sees not as man sees because man looks on the outward appearance. Jesus looked down from the cross differently than man looked up to the cross. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord because Jesus did not see as man sees. Amen. I've got news for you. I don't have to see like man sees either because I have the Holy Ghost in me. I have the cross in me. I am in the blood of the cross. I'm at the foot of the cross. I have been revealed, uh, God has revealed to me revelation that he's going to have a glorious, glorious church. He's coming back again and he's going to set up a government, a theocracy on this earth uh, Praise the name of the Lord Amen. that will rule and reign with him for a thousand years. Yes. Uh, and there's another scripture. It said, but while we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are not seen. For the things that are seen are temporal. So you just keep looking at how much you can do with seven days a week, so much breath in your lungs, you and I just keep that and never get a revelation to separate our bodies and give all and most and good part of our life to Christ and then finally give it all. And all we'll do is see the things that are, but we'll never see the things that are not. While we look not upon the things that are seen, but the things which are not seen. What, what do you mean they're not seen? It means millions and millions of people never see they don't see how to get a good spirit. They don't see how to overcome the flesh. They don't see how to get up and let the Lord use them as Holy Ghost temples in the church of the living God. They don't see how to dress right, act right, keep the right spirit, live on this earth, sanctified, 
separated from the world. They don't see that. They just don't see it. Well, somebody said, if they don't see it, then they can't do it. You're right. That's why millions are not doing it. Because they don't see it, and they can't do it. Amen. It takes God letting you see it. Amen. Somebody said, I'll never do that. That's because you don't see it. Uh, I'll never be like that. That's because you don't see it. I'll, I'll never change. That's because you don't see it. See, I'll never be any different than I am. That's because you don't see it. But God is going to have a people that will finally see. Their eyes will be open, and God will give them revelation that he's coming back again for a glorious church. Praise the name of the Lord. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. They're going to get a revelation. And that revelation is going to wake them up. Wake them up. Change them from the negative to the positive. Change them to obedience. Yes. You know, some people, they don't even, they, they, they can't even have an obedient spirit. No. You know that? They say, oh, God, they had a Christ. Christ had a man, man had a woman. That means, I tell you what that means, I got a revelation on that. Uh, if you have revelation, but you may not see it. Uh, 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 God is the head of Christ, yes. and Christ is the head of the ministry, and the ministry is the head of the church. Uh, a good percentage of the people are not subject to a pastor. They're not subject to a minister. <laughs> You know when they, they're they subject to it? It's when they need something. Right. When they get in trouble. Yeah. When they get a problem. That's right. uh, when they get some uh, things they can't handle. Right. Then uh, they're so obedient. Why, they would jump through a hoop and run over a wall. Uh, because they're so obedient. Uh, because uh, they need something. They, they, they need something. But they're, they're not obedient otherwise. They don't wonder if, if, if is, that, is that right according to the teaching of my pastor? Does my pastor teach that? Does he does he sanction that? It is, it, well, he, if he's the head over the woman, uh, I'm going to have to talk to him. I don't have to ask him. I'll just go do what I want to do. I'll do it when I, if it's Saturday night. I'll go do what I want to do. Uh, he can be in church. He can be laboring and upholding the church. He can be trying to get the church to come to perfection and working on the church. But i got other plans. So I'm going I'm to do what I want to do. And I'll, I'll, I'll never even talk to him. I'll never even uh, say anything to him. Because I'm going to do what I want to do. Because that rebel nature is there. And though I say God is the head of Christ, and Christ is the head of man, but yet, uh, really not now. Later on, when I really need you, then you can be my head. See, that, that, that's, not, that's not the word of God. And that will never bring about divine order in a New Testament church. Never will. And nobody likes order. Let me tell you right now, uh, nobody likes order. I, 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 let me give you an example. If you if you start setting order and you got children in your home and you say to Sally, Sally, straighten up there. Sally, don't you do that. Uh, Joe, don't you do that. Um, uh, they don't like it. No. You never saw such frowns and you never saw such carrying on. Right. Why, I've got the meanest daddy in the world. I've got the meanest mother. I, I'm telling you, my mother's so mean. My daddy's so mean. Yeah. Oh, if you don't want they're mean, because they're trying to get you to do right. right. <clears throat> because they're trying... They get you to do the right thing. Now, now there's some mean. Why? Uh, I don't have to uh, obey that. See, because there's a there's a rebel nature that's in us, and and that we we have that rebel nature, and that rebel nature is what Christ encountered up until the very excuse me just a moment. Praise the Lord. Praise your name, Lord. Up until the last moment that. He spilled his blood out. When he spilled his blood out, the rebel nature was gone. Oh, I have a pastor. Do you really have a pastor? Is he really over you in the Lord? Do you really consider him? Do you really pray for him? Do you ever really uh, re recognize the burden he's under? Uh, when when, when, when uh, the strain, the labor, seven days a week, five services a week, um, the strain of that right there. Who, who keeps this place going? Uh, who really uh, sets their tithing aside? Their tithing, 10%, 10% of what they had, and set it right there. And then an offering on, on, on with a tithing. Who does that? Uh, to keep the church active, to keep it alive, to keep it well, to keep it a stronghold, 
uh, not not eight percent, not six percent, but ten percent. And then somebody said, "That is the New Testament, Brother Marlow." Want to engage me in the scriptures on that? Well, what, what, you want to you want to you want to engage Brother Marlow in a discussion of the scriptures that that's not that's not New Testament teaching as well as Old Testament teaching. Let me let me say this: tithing is Old Testament teaching and it's New Testament teaching. It's Old Testament teaching and it's New Testament teaching. Ten percent of everything I have belongs to God. And an offering mm -hmm. on that top of that, uh, that, that, uh, that, that belongs to God. I couldn't do that. I'll, I'll, I'll miss my car payment. Strange, strange, some of us have been doing that all of our life. And we pay for our cars. It's strange, uh, some of us have been doing that all of our life. And we pay for our cars. We never lost a car. Mm -hmm. uh, you will never lose anything obeying the scriptures, right. obeying the word of God. You'll lose if you let that rebel nature in you make a renegade out of you to where that you finally get a sour attitude and a sour spirit toward anything that the man of God would say in correction <laughs> or in admonishing, uh, you'll lose them. You'll, you'll lose them. From that point on, uh, you'll lose. But you'll never lose uh, by uh, giving to God and giving your life and giving your best and giving your all because that's what Christ did. That's what Christ did. He gave his all. He gave his best. He gave his blood. He gave his life. And because of that, he produced a church. Because of that, he produced a New Testament church. That's why he could say, upon this rock, 